Okay, so hi there everybody. We're now on our next video on number theory and in this video we're going to um you know, we're going to have a very new topic. This topic is the linear Diophantine equations. Okay, and this will run for I think two to three videos or maybe four. We'll see about that. But um we're going to introduce in this first video the linear Diophantine equations or generally we're going to talk about Diophantine equations okay as a whole. So Diophantine equations are actually, um, even though we can see that this is a new, you know, a, a new, a new term for us, Diophantine equations. But Diophantine equations, or rather, these are just equations with integral coefficients. So when you say integral coefficients, um, from the word integer, shall we say? So the coefficients are integers, okay? Or shall we say it's in z, it's in z, with integral solutions. So, you know, as you can see here, since this is number theory, I am I mean, well, this is number theory. So um, everything here will be based on the integers, okay, specifically positive integers, but um, we're talking about um, integers as a, as a whole, okay? So equations with integral coefficients and with integral solutions. So that is what you call a Diophantine equation, okay? Simple as it is. So that's a Diophantine equation. Now, the name is after... Diophantus, okay, um, one of the one of the great um, mathematicians of antiquity, okay, one of them. So who wrote the extensive extensively on them? Okay, there. So that's it. So again, the Diophantine equations are equations with integral coefficients and with integer solutions. The name is from Diophantus, who wrote extensively on, on them. Maybe you heard Diophantus. He is the one, you know, famous the the one which who is the author of the famous Arithmetica. Which Fermat himself, okay, you know, edited you know, the, the Fermat's last theorem. So, for example, um, say we restrict our solutions to integers. So, when we restrict our solutions to integers, okay, well, we have a bunch, actually, we have a lot of Diophantine equations that we can give. So, for example, the equation 2x plus 3y equals 4, if we're going to restrict this to integer solutions, that's a Diophantine equation. When we have x squared plus y squared equals 1, this is an equation of the radius of, radius of a circle, of a unit circle. Um, if you restrict this, the solutions into integers, we, we will call this an integer uh, Diophantine equations. And we have here the famous Pythagorean theorem. So restrict them to integers, we can call that a Diophantine equation. Okay, so that's it. So the final equations. Um, integers are the coefficients. Integers are the solutions, in short. So the simplest case of Diophantine equations, there's a lot of um, cases of Diophantine equations, in fact. So the simplest case, or the simplest class, shall we say, is the class of linear Diophantine equations. Linear Diophantine equations. In short, let's call them LDEs. Okay, for the sake of, um, you know, saying it shortly. So linear Diophantine equations, LDE. So an LDE in two variables, we will have the variables x and the variable y, is a Diophantine equation of the form ax plus by equals c. Okay, ax plus by equals c. So let's have this. Okay, so this is our Diophantine equation in two variable. Okay, the simplest part, if we have the variables x and y. Okay, so this is our LDE. Okay, so to give you one example, okay, or before that, actually, um, solving such an LDE before we have the example, solving such LDE, this one, okay, systematically involves the Euclidean algorithm, actually. So it has the Euclidean algorithm on it or with it, as you will see shortly. Okay, first we study LDEs in two variables. Um, LDEs were known in ancient China. And of course, in from India and uh, a lot more countries, but um, solely, okay, or it, it was emphasized in China and in India as applications to astronomy and riddles. So we begin our our discussion with an interesting puzzle. Okay, this is taken from um, India, I believe. So let's have this example. I do not fit on one slide, but let's do this. Okay, so example. So we have 23, 23 weary travelers entered the outskirts of a lush and beautiful forest. They found 63 equal heaps of plantains. So we have the number 23, we have number 63, let's highlight them, and seven single fruits. So let's, let's highlight that, seven single fruits, and divided them equally. 
Okay, we will have to find the number of fruits in each heap. Okay, again, there are 23 weary travelers enter the outskirts of a lush and beautiful forest. They found 63 equal heaps of plantains and seven single fruits and divided them equally to each of them. So we have there 23. Find the number of fruits in each heap. Each heap. So let's have a solution for this, shall we? Okay, so our solution, let's use a red pen, a black pen for that. A solution. Okay, so we will first let, first the letting, let X um, denote the number of plantains. Number of plantains. Uh, in a heap, rather. Oh, in a heap. And we will let Y. Similarly, we let Y as the number of plantains received by a traveler. Number of plantains received by a, tra by a traveler. So when you say by, by a traveler, that's one traveler. Okay, that's only one traveler. Okay, so then we let the LDE then. So since we have our X and Y, so then um we get the LDE. We get the linear Diophantine equation. Um let's make that a different color. So it'll be highlighted. 63 X plus 7 equals 23 Y. So since X is the number of plantains per heap, um, 23 is the number of, um, or rather Y is the number of plantains received by a traveler. So that's what we want to get. Um, we know that there are 63, um, there are 63 equal heaps of plantains, and there are seven single fruits. Um, the se the seven single fruits must be um, must be put in the equation because uh, you know the plantains and the heaps are equally divided, and there are 23 travelers. So since both an X must be positive. Uh, obviously, they should be positive because this is the number of uh, travelers is the number of heaps. There's so there's no such negative um, values in this part of the problem or this part of the solution. We are interested in finding only the positive integral solutions of the LD above. Solving for y since y is the number of travelers, so we get okay, isolating the y. So what we have is y equals sixty three x plus 7 all over 23 so this is our value our equation okay um for y equation for y now um when x okay when x is greater than zero clearly y should also be greater than zero okay so try the values one two three and so on what we'll do is try and error we're going to try the values of one two, three for x, and so on, until we have the value of y, which becomes an integer. That's actually um, how we know if the LDE is solvable or not. So again, we will try by trial and error. But um, by uh, by the future lessons, we will be having this, not in trial and error. So one can see that if x is equal to 5, so let's have it. Um, imagine if x is equal to 5, uh, what is the value of y? If this, then what we have is um, y equals 63 times 5 plus 7, all over 23. Let's have the solving, the solve the solution for this. Okay, maybe I can put it here or, yeah, let's put it here. So what do we have if x is equal to 5? So we have y equals What's 63 times 5? 63 times 5 is um, 30, 15. So we have 315. Uh, sorry for that. So we have 315 plus 7 is 322 okay, over 23. Okay, so we have uh, 332 over 23. And then we need to divide that. Um, let's do this here. 322 divided by 23, we have only 1. 23 is the answer, uh, 92. I don't know, let's try 4. Or what? 4. Okay, uh, 4. Let's try 4. 4 times 23 is, um, this is going to become 8. And then 12, that's going to become 92. 
So we have 0. So therefore, this is the integer solution. y equals 14. y equals 14. So y equals 14. Okay. So therefore, um, we can say, um, hence, um, if x is 5, y is equal to 14. Okay. And this is a solution. Actually, this is a solution to our LDE because they are integer solutions. Okay, They're 5 is an integer, y is an integer, wherein both of them are integers. Okay, since both of them are integers, so they should be part of the solution of the, or, you know, um, it's a Diophantine equation since both of them are integers. Okay, so in we can also verify that x, if x is equal to 28, um, y is equal to 27, you may have, you may check that on your own. Um, we, yet, we have... A lot of solutions actually in fact the lde this lde has infinitely many solutions okay it has infinitely many solutions okay um so yeah um i think this is the best part to end the video okay at least we have we saw that this lde this is an, an example of an lde okay in the next part um we will be establishing that um it is necessary and sufficient. It is a necessary and sufficient condition for an LDE AX plus BY equals C to be solvable. So its proof will provide a formula for the arbitrary solution. So when it is solvable. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Okay. Thank you very much. See you.